So we're going to learn how to apply derivatives to a physics situation. Uh, it's not uh, all encompassing because we're going to we're going to spend the second semester really learning how to apply calculus to real world situations. So we're just kind of getting our feet wet a little bit. Tests are generally non-existent in the okay. second semester. Nice. Yeah, so yes, they do decrease. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, we we go from testing to projecting. Yeah. So, uh, so velocity. Velocity is a vector. Right. So vector quantity. having magnitude and direction, but the magnitude would be speed. Now we're not really gonna get into uh, vector operations or anything like that, at least uh, not for the foreseeable future, but the idea is that we're not just talking about the magnitude of uh, the speed, we're just, we're talking about which direction it's going in also, all right? Uh, so we'll talk position function. Position function you might know from uh, previous courses, and that would be 1 half AT squared plus initial velocity times time plus the initial position, all right? So we're gonna work with free falling objects, but this is not necessarily always related to free falling objects, all right? We're, uh, we're gonna apply this in, a, in the basketball project, which will be, we'll start that after we take the unit test. Uh, we'll be working with what are known, our, uh, known as parametric equations. You might've learned something about that in pre-calc. Uh, those are equations that relate horizontal and vertical position to time, all right, the passage of time. So we're able to not just only determine the height of an object based off of its horizontal movement, but we're able to determine the height and horizontal movement after a period of time, all right? So uh, we'll define the variables here. A is equal to acceleration. T is time. All right, time is whatever the units are in the problem, so seconds, hours, whatever. Uh, v sub O is your velocity at time T equals zero. All right, so you might know that as initial velocity right because it's the the velocity at the starting time but the thing is time t equals zero does not always represent an initial value right it, it seems like it probably would but that's only if that's only if zero corresponds with the start of the activity right so i go my my analogy is running around a track so if you start the clock when a person starts running then zero is the start and negative time would have no meaning. But if you start the, like a person's already running and you just start the clock when you get there, then zero is an arbitrary value. It just represents the, the time that you started the clock, all right? The person was already running, so negative time would actually have a ton of meaning. It's just where the person was before you got there, all right? So there's, there's meaning to negative values here, which is really the moral of the story, right? So S sub zero would be the position at time T equals zero. Now the whole thing is equal to S of T Right, S of T is a function of time. So S as a function of time, you could write that, but that doesn't really say what we want it to say. 
uh, S of T is the position at any time T. All right, so the position at any moment in time. All right, so we're creating a function to represent the object's path at any moment in time. All right, once you have that, then you can do lots of things with it, right? And in fact, the reality is that that's pretty much the lesson because uh, what, what do we do when, once we have a function? Well, we find rates of change. What are the possible rates of change? Instantaneous and average, right? If it's an instantaneous rate of change, we're looking for a derivative. If it's an average rate of change, we're looking for a slope over an interval. Uh, by the way, if a question like this one asks you for the average velocity, you could find the slope by hand, but you could also use a function in your calculator. Does anybody remember what that function would be? So if I wanted to find the average velocity, so the oh, average oh, rate of change. Yeah, use the program called average rate. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so uh, there's no need to do that by hand. So we're looking for numerical derivatives and numerical rates of change over an interval. So the calculator is going to be your best friend when it comes to this kind of stuff, right? The only challenge for these kind of questions is going to be coming up with the equation to begin with. And you could even see, number one, it starts you off by just flat out giving you the equation. I tell you the structure, a ball is dropped from a height of 100 feet, so that's the initial height. It's dropped, so its initial velocity would be zero. If it were thrown downward, then its initial velocity would be negative something, all right? The only question might be, well, where did that negative 16 come from? Well, I have one half of A. Well, what did A have to be in order for this to become negative 16? Negative 32, right? So what would be the only thing that would be impacting this ball as it's dropped? What the only force of nature? Gravity, right? So what's that telling us about the measure of gravity? It's about 16 feet per second squared. Well, it, once you multiply it by half, it'll be about 16 feet per second squared, but it's actually gonna be 32 feet per second per second. All right, so 32 feet per second squared, but in the downward direction, which is why it's negative. All right, so we're able to glean from this what the gravitational constant is, but since it is constant, it's something that you should just know. Uh, if I were working in meters, what would the measure be? 9.8 meters per second per second. All right, um, meters per second squared, feet per second squared, that sounds uh, like more concise. But when you think, at least think of it as feet per second per second, it, it actually makes more sense because gravity is impacting an object at a rate, a rate of change of 32 feet per second every second. So 32 feet per second is my rate of increase in velocity every single second. So I'm starting off with a velocity of zero. After one second, my velocity would be what? 32 in the downward direction. After two seconds, I'm gonna get another 32 feet per second, so 64, and so on. All right, so that's what the, the impact is of that coefficient, all right? But really, again, the only thing that you, that you need to do that's new for these kind of questions is potentially, not even in this case, but potentially come up with the equation that you need to either differentiate or find the slope for, all right? So, Mini lesson.